Good morning. This is part of the digital track, and this we have Jim Lee and Amy Ladas from the Fulton Financial Corp. Amy's out there still handing out more kazoos. Um, Jim is the Senior Vice President for no and Knowledge Management Director. He's responsible for the strategic vision and implementation of the corporation's knowledge management capabilities. Uh, prior to, work to joining Fulton Financial, he was at APQC, where he worked with a variety of government and private clients and led a team that developed the Enterprise Camp this. Strategy for Commands of the U.S. Army and the U.S. Navy. Amy is the uh, user interface designer, and I didn't print on both sides, so I don't have the rest of her introduction. Um, but it's, it's, it's on the website. If you look under speakers, you can read all about her credentials, and I apologize. <laughs> but obviously she's fun because she's handing out kazoos. So. Um, they're going to balance their talk and take questions when they, when, when they choose to take questions. I'll run the timer so we can get you out of here at a good time for lunch. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, David. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Uh, anyone who doesn't have one, be sure to let us know. Um, thank you. Um, I have been fortunate enough to have been here a few times in the past. You are fortunate enough that Amy is here this time. <laughs> Seriously, because uh, I'm going to blitz through basic demographics because you really came here for Amy's portion of the talk, okay? So with that said, let me go ahead and get started. Here's what we're going to talk to you about today. Of course, there are some things about who we are because unfortunately, uh, every one of you out there is probably not a Fulton Bank or Fulton Financial customer yet. Uh, so we'll let you know how to become one. I want to talk a little bit about our team, why we're here. Also about, obviously, like the old saying about start with the end in mind, where we're going. And I will start us there and turn it over to Amy again for the really good stuff, all right? So quickly, Fulton Financial. The picture you see across the banner is actually our back door. The picture that just sort of appeared is like a thumbnail of our recently redesigned FultonBank.com site, customer facing that you're all welcome to go to and sign up. Um, we actually won an award for having the most personalized uh, public facing website by a particular company. I forget their name, I apologize. But you can see we've been around for about 136 years. So we're well steeped in the banking business, but more importantly, in our community. And so you can see where we currently have branches. Um, there are a couple of different names here you'll see. Fulton Bank of New Jersey, for example, Lafayette Ambassador Bank. Um, you don't have to have a show of hands. But if you were a Swineford Bank customer before, or a Fulton National Bank customer, welcome to Fulton Bank. About a month ago, we were able to absorb those two affiliate banks into the Fulton Bank Charter, and so now you've transitioned into the sort of the uh, Papa Bank, if you will, the uh, benchmark bank of our organization. And ultimately, our intention is to have all Fulton Bank only. So all our systems will be the same, treatment will be the same, customer service will be equally excellent. Not that they're not now, but they're per perhaps different a little bit. Um, okay. Oh, but what's important to us, because of course we know you can bank anywhere really these days, are these kinds of things. We really consider ourselves a community bank. We recently crossed the $20 billion threshold in assets, which for some, they say, we're either a big small bank or a small big bank, but it doesn't really matter. We really feel like we're invested in our communities wherever we're at, and so that becomes really important because we're still all about relationships. So I hope that never changes no matter how big we get. All right, so these are our teammates, and your task is to match up the faces with the pictures or the, uh, the names. Um, Amy will go into much more detail about who we are and why we're like this, but this gives you a sense of the folks that we're working with, everyone else back at the office working hard while Amy and I are taking this field trip. Okay. Now, the reasons why Amy and I came. 
We've taken this sort of organic approach to developing our next generation of our standards, our intranet, principally because even at our size, we have corporate procedures, processes, right? Maybe you do as well. Uh, you've got to go through a project intake process maybe, get your project scored to see if it gets on the priority list, and then eventually a project maybe gets launched. Uh, we didn't want to do that. We said, look, we're just going to do this under the radar. And if Skunk Works hadn't already been copyrighted, we'd call ourselves that, seriously. Uh, we actually currently meet, um, because we have this do-it-ourselves, we currently meet every week. No one knows we're meeting. <laughs> yeah, our bosses do not know. They don't even know we're doing this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't want the thumb of corporate bureaucracy, okay, on us. So yes, we meet every, every week, and we design what we're, Amy's going to tell you about. Um, our group, uh, those people that you saw in those pictures and those names, there are only two that I recall that have even more than four years of time with Fulton. The rest of us are all about two years or under, some within a few months. So we don't have a lot of old baggage to say, oh, we can't do it because we've always done it this way. It's like, why can't we do it? Again, goes back to our we're going to do it ourselves kind of attitude. And then finally, 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 oh, OK. Of course, you can go to any number of sessions or maybe even in your own companies about the customer experience. And I'm all for that, too. But frankly, my position is, the customer experience starts with the employee experience. If we give our consumers of our internal experience the same kind of thing that we want our external customers to have, they in turn will offer better service to our final customers. So I'm totally focused on that, even though there are others in our organization who talk about the retail customer experience, as I say. So um, that's kind of my head. and. I will tell you where else my head will go if my remote will go there. Um, four major food groups, as I want to call them. The first is the typical KM kind of stuff, right? We have people devoted strictly to search engine optimization, continuous improvement there. Uh, the circle, of course, represents our knowledge processes wheel. We are a BYOD organization, so being mobile is top of mind as well. And so, you know, you can decide for yourself if you like that or hate that, uh, as I spent all my time on my phone answering emails and stuff, which I wish I didn't have to do. Uh, for me, another part of that in KM, though, picture represents things like knowledge fairs, bringing people together, educating them physically, in terms of a space that says, hey, this is what CAM is all about here. The Hub Award, I think I brought one with me. I can't remember what I did with it, though. It's a, it's a medal. It's like a finisher's medal. And that's to award people, reward and recognition kind of things. It's something that they can have that's prominent. And we do see for the ones that we've given those to, they like putting them up in their offices or their cubicles or whatever. Finally, in the lower corner here, gamification. That's a big one for me. In fact, this year, we finally, our United Way program this year, campaign, uh, we're in about the second week. And in previous years, we did the typical, well, here's an Excel bar graph, and here's where the different people are contributing, and it was like, oh. So this year, we changed it up. I don't have an image of it, but we gamified it by turning it into a tricycle race. So I've watched these tricycles race across this, this uh uh, track now and uh, you know typically we have one group that excels beyond the others um, and you might think that well that's sort of disheartening if you see you're so far behind but one of the groups this year actually went from almost zero and has almost caught the leader so I'm really excited about that I hope they actually surpass them and watch them go back and forth next year I'm doing something where I'm going to combine Shark Week and March Madness Yes, we have an organization, and every year they have a pumpkin decorating contest, right? Um, but it's totally physical. If you're not in our office, you don't even know about it. 
you, if you don't know where to find it, to vote on it, on a piece of paper, you don't get to vote. So here's my plan. Next year, it's gonna be corporate wide. Elements of Shark Week and March Madness. What's Shark Week, All right? One week of events. March Madness, brackets. So I'm gonna have brackets, one against two, three against four, four, you know, five against six, and they're gonna culminate in a championship all in one week. And I will be entirely within the, the organization electronic voting, something to get our folks invested in doing something with our intranet. This lower left quadrant is some of the depiction of my future digital workplace. Probably none of that should be new to you, but you have to remember who we are. We're a highly regulated bank, and there's a lot of things we can't do. Um, and the things that we're going to do maybe is a little touchy as well, but that's why our bosses don't know we're here. <laughs> when I used to do this particular slide, I used to have like the Facebook icon with a red circle and slash through it. Ah, you know what, I'm actually gonna test workplace. <laughs> so I had to take that off of my slide um, in as much as I didn't want, bless you, didn't want it to be Facebook at work. And then finally, the aspirations, and I see Kim out there in the audience, Kim Glover, Technic FMC. Things like KM Award winners, Make Award, ISO, and Malcolm Baldridge, because those frameworks of Malcolm Baldridge, ISO, they're, they're quality oriented, but they're really about what can KM do to support quality, and how can I get people who have a quality mindset, and not necessarily KM, to come along and play in KM. So I'm taking it two different approaches, right? Okay, that's it for me. The rest of the time is Amy's and yours. So now I'm gonna take a break. I'll see you guys at lunch. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yay, all right, cool. I was struggling a little bit with my necklace. I, if you saw it, got caught in my sweater. This is the price, the price of, of accessories. So, let me know if I'm stepping in front of the screen. I tend to pace a lot, so here we go. I, yeah, okay. So what is UX? I'm going to be talking about UX because that is what I do at Fulton Financial Corporation. And I was brand new to UX. Uh, Fulton has never before me had a UX person there. So I started with them and they're like, you're gonna have to be a cheerleader for this. You're gonna have to talk to everybody. You're gonna have to let them know what UX is. And good luck. So UX here is, what you see right here is just a representation of some, some of the many gazillion things that are out there that can help you. These are some of the tools that I've found to be very instrumental in helping others to understand what type of thinking goes into user experience. Does anyone recognize the teapot? Yeah. Don Norman, if you have never heard of him before, I highly suggest you Google him. And Don Norman is about 83, 84 years old, and he is still going strong. He is what's considered the grandfather of UX. And he is, his mind is amazing. We have user story mapping. Has anyone ever used any of those techniques here, user story mapping? All right, cool, very good. What about design thinking? All right, all right, we got a few, nice. What about persona making or user profiles? Okay. And anyone ever heard of Rosenfield or Rosenfeld Media? All right, if you haven't checked into them, they are a very good source to start with because they offer an entire line of different user experience techniques. And they also somewhat blend in with other roles as well. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of knowledge management principles. You're going to see a lot of that same kind of thinking from that, from that series. Okay. So, I think I got everybody in here as far as kazoos, and uh, this is meant to just sort of break the ice a little bit, help us just relax a little bit, 
And I'm going to ask you all to stand because we generate different energy when we stand. So put down your little laptops, your note, notepads, cell phones, and all you need right now is the kazoos that I gave you. And if you didn't get a kazoo, yeah. Jim, OK. It's not Jim's problem. It was really mine. Can you make sure that they get them? Thank you. And I will give a little moment for everybody to get one. How many of you remember using kazoos as a kid? I still use them. You still use them? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, and uh, all right. So we're going to play a little test here. And I'm not going to tell you right away how to use them. All right? Okay. Yeah. I'm not even going to tell you which end to blow into right now. I'm not going to tell you anything. We're, we're just going to wing it. Let's just see how that goes. Okay. I guess we should at least, you know, figure out what key we're in. That might be a little high. All right, I'm not going to give it away too much. Let's just wing it. Here we go. my guy with the paper. There you are. All right. So how many of you checked out which end I grabbed to blow into? All right. Did you remember? Did you remember first which end to blow into? OK. Good job. You guys are smart. How many of you remembered that you have to hum? That's the beauty of these things. They only work when we use our voices. OK. So again, everybody, this time, make sure you're blowing into the biggest end. And again. OK, here we go. We're going to go to a next. Now that we're all humming and blowing into the right ends, because these are not as easy as we thought, right? OK, here we go. Good. I was expecting a lot of people to do what we did. So we have other verses. If you if you want to go to another verse, we can do another. <laughs> let me know. Another verse? Another verse? Everyone's like, no, this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. OK. There's even more verses than that. Could you imagine? <laughs> so wh why did we do that? First of all, I like to make people smile. And it also changes our energy when we realize we're just humans, right? That's the beauty of KM. That's the beauty of UX. That's the beauty of embracing human-centric design thinking is when you actually relate to humans. That's what we are at the core. No matter where technology takes us, that's where we are. So a little, little silly thing occurred to me. So what you see here is actually a personal example. We have Evan. Evan is part of the knowledge management team under Jim. And Evan is getting married. He's married at this point now. He's getting married, and I had this awesome concept to have a, a taco bar for him, and then I grabbed kazoos at the store. I was like, why not? It seems like a party thing, right? So I grabbed kazoos. Um, I didn't tell anyone how to use them. I just passed them out. Everyone grabbed them. I'm like, ooh, kazoos. How many of us do you think grabbed it the wrong way, and we're going, <laughs> the only one was Holly. Holly was the only one who remembered how to use it. So Evan walks in the door. We're all like so excited. And instead of like cheering, yay, Evan, we're all like. <laughs> 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 and 
and it occurred to me something as simple as a kazoo is not as simple as you think because our tools are only going to work if we tell other people how to use them. And then we watch them use them. We never make assumptions that they just know how to do it. So there's lots of lessons there. First of all, to accomplish great things, we have to do it together, which means we have to be vulnerable. I've often said this to some of the people who I've talked to so far, Brene Brown. If you have not heard of her, research her, look at, look at her TED Talks. She talks about vulnerability and being able to embrace that vulnerability. That is really key to being able to talk to and connect with other people. When you have a vision, don't keep it to yourself. You have to share it with other people. People cannot mind read. You have to also realize, it's actually humility, to realize you can't accomplish your vision all by yourself. You can't. Never assume something is easy to use, even doors, right? Do I push on this thing? Do I pull on a thing? Is it on a track? Where's the hinges, right? So many things. It's a door. How complicated can it be? Do we need signs on a door to tell us how to use a door? Really? Think about it. Most people won't ask for help. They'll assume that they know how to do it, and they'll try to do it. They will almost refuse to ask for help. They'll try, especially with technology. It's very tough for people to ask for help. So they will search. They will spend forever on a page trying to figure out what they should do next. And then they feel silly. They feel silly when they can't figure it out. Realize that every single time you walk into a room and you're presenting a new technology, they don't want to admit that they may not know how to use it. It's our interactions with our tools that prove whether a design actually works or not. It's just not the thing itself, right? So many technologies are here today in that showroom over there, right? But does it work or not, right? A demo is different than a hands-on exploration. Always hands-on trumps every single time. Low fidelity prototypes are often enough. So these weren't the biggest, most shiny, expensive kazoos, but they worked. Just like when we're talking about a design. A design can be as low fidelity, it can be sketches on a wall, as long as it communicates visually what it is you're trying to do. Getting your users involved sooner rather than later. That is so important. Don't wait and build the thing and then, oh, they'll use it. They probably won't. Or they will and then they'll abandon it. Things that are not easy to use, people stop using. And of course, it's OK to be silly sometimes, even if, it, if you feel weird when you're doing it. It makes us human. I'm having a little bit of a usability problem with my remote. So where does UX actually fit? Um, for those of you who may not be as familiar with UX as you should be, it's OK. It isn't a brand new field, but it keeps evolving, right? And some of the models I'm going to show you here show how much it has evolved. So right now we have customer experience, which you're kind of familiar with. Usually marketing runs that. And then we have user experience being a part of customer experience. Now we introduce a new concept, and that is service design. How many of you have heard service design before? OK. So service time, OK, what does that look like when we step into that a little bit more? So now we're looking at service design and user experience design. A lot of things in there. Architectural, industri industrial, we have sound. We have, of course, HCI, HCI human interaction. Uh, visual design, obviously. There we go. And now we have even more 
acronyms that you've probably heard of or, or methodologies. And that is experience design. You've heard of that before. That's where they try to capture the user experience, which is often known as the internal users. And then we have the customer experience, which is also used your end customers. You've heard that before. Now we have just experience design and its relationship to service design. Of course, supported by design thinking and systems thinking. These are just a small, small spectrum of what's available or what people have tried to represent visually as far as how all these pieces belong together. So, how many of you knew that psychology was part of user experience? Yeah. How many of you right now sometimes feel like you should have been told that before you entered knowledge management, that <laughs> psychology was going to be part of it? Yeah. It's almost like you feel like you have to have uh, this confidential agreement between you and the person you're speaking with. But that's what you do. You hold it, you're a vault, you move on, and then when you share it with other people, you share it in context, never without the details of exposing the person you talk to, right? What about art? Of course. All right, and science. Ah, we got the right brain, the left brain, we got the entire brain going, right? So this is one of the models that I've found out of all of the different types of models available that represents user experience and all of the different thinking and the methodology and the roles and the interactions. And you can see user experience at the center. It's all about us. Uh, not really. It actually incorporates the understanding and the relationship with all of those different types of roles. So when you're thinking about knowledge management when you go back, Think about who your user experience person is in your company. And if you haven't already talked to them, or you don't have one yet, think about what they might bring to the table. So this is called the QB model. So one of the things that I like about this is it's easy to remember. It's very easy to talk to people because most office people work in cubes. Yeah, QBs, right? So we have content, user, business, and interaction. Oh, I went the other way, Jim. There we go. And what you see here is a little snippet of something that I put together from all of the different types of methodologies that are out there to try to make it as concise as possible when I talk to people in an enterprise. So when you're talking about knowledge management, you're usually talking about a large corporation or a large enterprise where there's lots of moving pieces. So what I've done is I've curtailed that whole method of discovery, design, development, and beyond, like that Bed Bath & Beyond, right? And beyond, so what happens after you develop it? It doesn't stop there. So, Jim said we were gonna talk about our team. I will just a moment, just so you can start to understand how rapidly we've grown and how much potential is there, which is kind of scary. So, this is my attempt at trying to give us an identity uh, one of the things we struggled with was trying to get us an identity. What are we? What are we? Because they're not really just UX, right? And they're not just taking my role, my principles, and spreading them outwards. It's really about that experience design itself. And the thought here is Fulton, intuitive, innovative, <laughs> intuitive, intuitive, innovative. What's the other one? I can't even remember. It escapes me. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe this isn't our identity. Um, <laughs> anyway, yes. What's that? Okay. And I blush when I get embarrassed. Okay, here we go. All right, so September 2017, I started with Fulton. And I, Jim actually danced for me when I started. He did. He was so excited to see. He was like, I'm so glad to meet you. Okay. And that's where I started a discovery session. Uh, ask me about that a little bit later. I'll tell you a lot of the things that I did when I first started. March 2018, partnership with change management. Aha, very key, very key. They see or have an interesting lens to what's happening and what's changing in the organization. Very important to grab a hold of them and make a partnership. April to May, 
So we attempted to try to figure out how to start from the top of the organization and go down. Um, I'm going to move on because you're going to see that that may not have been the best approach. So then we went and we went from actually the bottom up. So we tried April to May. Uh, there were, needless to say, there were some partners or sections in the organization that weren't ready to try these kind of things. They weren't ready to see the vision that we had. Uh, they almost needed to see it. So June to August, Evan and I actually led a number of workshops, picking parts workshops. And that's basically where you get a pulse of what is going on in the organization as far as design and branding and how do they represent themselves for digital design primarily. That's what we were looking for. How do they represent themselves and then what do they want to see in design standards, digital design standards. So that's something you're going to see me talk more about is design. And there's a little sample of picking parts. If you're curious, Google that as well. Picking parts, products, and people. So we did a lot of story mapping, and we did a lot of those workshops. And that was primarily to get everybody having a voice. And so many people didn't have a voice before. So when I would get them in a little workshop and say, hey, tell me what are the most important things that you would like to see in a digital design standard system? What would you like to see? And they'd be like, we never did this before. So it was exciting. August 2018, we got a senior BA who was involved. And we also got a front end, a new front end for SharePoint. Um, and I say that because that front end person now will help to take those design standard systems, all of those design system standards that I want to show, such as button color, font, typography, uh, you name it, layout, spacing, grids. Um, but then not just that, but how do we do that? How do you teach other people how to digitally design? That was part of the key as far as gaining traction there. We have application development joins the team. So now in-house, in IT, you have application developers, hopefully. And those application developers have a lot in their heads, right? They can't communicate just what's in their heads. So you need that front end. You need those digital design standards that are shown. And you need to be able to visually show them quickly so you can gain traction. Then we have a partnership with process improvement. So we actually have someone in IT who is tasked with trying to find all of the improvements in IT, all of the processes in IT. And she was struggling because she's like, I don't know where to start, Amy. Help me. So I'm like, I know a place you can go. So I brought her into our team. And now together, again, she has this vision. But you can't implement a vision alone. You need a team. So now we have very close in time. We have mid-October. So BSM, so the little group that I belong to in IT, has accrued the application developers. So instead of them being in an island all by themselves, now they're in with us, which now means we have better visibility into what they're actually working on, which now means they have visi visibility, into, visibility into what I do. And now we can actually work together quick. So I'm doing quick prototypes. I'm doing quick wireframes. And we're showing it immediately. And then we have a graphics person. I had no idea. I had no idea. Knowledge management, right? We have so many people with all these skills, and yet they sit. How do we get that out, right? So our team is pioneering experience design with these UX methodologies, of course, because I'm trying to bring that to the table, and design thinking. So I'm not going to read all this, but I'm going to bring it out to the table because I'm told I don't have that many minutes. I guess I'm talking a lot. So, all right. So we have story mapping techniques. Usability. I need a pocket, right? OK. OK, we have empath em empathizing first, which just means who are you, what are you trying to do, and how can I make your life easier? Then we have story mapping techniques. So story mapping, a lot of you are familiar with. It just literally means get into a room, figure out what your topic is that you're going to talk about, and then just let it come out. And don't let it come out in words. 
because we do too much of that already. We already do too much of that, going to meetings, blah, 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 blah. And you try to jot it down, and then you go walk away, and then nothing gets done. When you story map, you think, you write, usually a thought per sticky, and then as that person stands up and now is involved, whether he's an introvert or not, now you place, so you put it on the board. Then as a group, you can arrange and then figure out if there's a timeline involved. Or then what should you address first? Prioritization, right? Story mapping. Uh, let's see here. Telling our stories in a simpler way. Many of the things that you're going to come across, I guarantee you, have to do with people telling their stories or not knowing how to tell their stories. If you can find a success, whether small or large, and you can find a way to visually tell that on a single page, not document, not a book, but a single page, and you can share how you have succeeded, what went into it, how long it took, how many people realistically input their, their opinions and their beliefs and their strategy, just share that story. Share some of the faults, maybe some of the hard things that you had to overcome. It's being a human. Share that story. Find a way. That gives you tra traction in whatever you're trying to do. So our largest endeavor together, very quickly, even though this is a talk all on its own, is the design system. So here what you see is some of the things that I'm trying to do and trying to help everybody in the organization understand that we need digital design standards. We need not just the standards, but we need to help other people to understand how to use those standards. You have people who are using PowerPoints. You have people who are sending emails. You have people, oh, you have people who are sending statements. Like you have, like everybody's creating, 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 creating. What are they creating to? Really, what are they creating to? Design system. See if your company has one, where it is, and if it's up to date, who maintains it? It's, it's the perfect thing. And it probably won't just live in marketing because this is not just a marketing attempt. Marketing may start it initially, but this is someone who has to love it, has to understand the vision, has to understand its importance. So everyone is excited by the possibilities. Everyone, every single person in the organization. So we have application developers who are taking this and immediately reproducing it as fast as I can do it, as fast as I can get these principles out, these design standards, I'm throwing it to them. Here, take it, run, take it, run. We have managers who in the company have previously thought there is no way we're going to make any movement forward. There is no way. We have too many things, too many problems. Everybody's in their own little worlds, right? Managers who are at the point of just like going, I might have to move on. They're seeing these things. They're seeing how people are interacting with this, how people are interacting with the wireframes and the prototypes and the, the, that quicker movement. And they're like, oh, how do we use this too? We have BAs who are now not having to produce a 60-page BRD document. They are working right from the prototypes and the wireframes, those visual representations of what your solution is doing, what a user is experiencing as you go from point A to B to C. Then we have business people who have never seen this before, and they're like, where have you been all our lives? We love this. Now we can finally see what the solution is. And now we can also help to understand, oh, you need verbiage there? You need a little messaging to the user there? We got it. Now they know what to do. So beware when you do this kind of thing. You will get people excited. You will have tons of people who want to work with you and want to do their next project with you. They want you included. Remember, I'm just one, right? I'm one person right now. How do I inspire other people to take these methodologies, right? to learn how to do these things, to interact with human beings and get their real pain points out, and then prioritize to make improvement and, and movement towards them. Yes, this is, this is a real thing. So how we're getting stronger. This is not my strong point, the, uh, the prioritization of uh, 
being realistic when you have people who want to work with you. Because I want to say yes to everybody. I want to say yes, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, right? And at the end of the day, you have to go, I can't do it all at the same exact time, but let's see what is most important. Let's talk as a team as far as what is going to have the biggest impact, what will help people, and that goes at the top of the list. We're also asking people to actually commit to doing a few things on their own when they want to work with us. So it's not just us, give, 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 give. We're asking them to do certain things on their own and come back to the table. Essential, essential. We are also basically just trying to be realistic in what we can handle as a team. Jim told you that really our management doesn't really know that we're doing this. They kind of do, but they don't understand what that means or what that's going to do to possibly growth and including more and more people and getting more and more people who want to work, which means we, we need more people who are devoted to this kind of thing, right? So quite honestly, what can we do as a team in our limited time? And then what do we have to do as little chunks, right? Okay, you two, go. You two, go, right? What do we do together versus what do we, what do we just call? All right. I, I clearly had grandiose ideas as far as how much I would not be talking. So um, here we go. <laughs> so the intranet itself. So design system, design standards lives up here. OK, this, this is not just for SharePoint. This is not just for Bootstrap. This is not just for uh, mobile. This is not just for you name it. You name it, this is not just for a specific application, a specific area, it is the thing. And under the thing, one of those things is SharePoint. So that intranet, the way we use knowledge management to help people to come together. What you're gonna see is my attempt at saying, we haven't got that picture yet, okay? So if you're looking here and going, what is she doing? What are they doing? How are they doing it? You're gonna see some things that I've tried to make movement on as far as getting the tools in the right place instead of on people's hard drives, getting them out in a central repository somewhere where people can actually use them and collaborate. Knowledge management. I know, sorry if I'm reusing using that term. Okay, now we have also the tools of how to do it. So we're also engaging, obviously, not losing it with search analytics, uh, making sure it's responsive so people can use it on their phones. All of this is going into, it's all right now, in our heads. And what we're trying to do is find that highest priority item that affects people the most, that people will see the biggest impact on, that prioritization list. And we're trying to take and work with those people and make movement. And that's not the home page, right? It's not just the marketing home page. It's an actual thing that everybody in the company is using. So this will be coming, I guarantee you. Please don't worry. And how we're getting there. I've kind of talked about this before, but I'm interested in what you guys have as far as some of the questions you may have. So very important is to identify your users, not who you think they are, but who they actually are, which means not just interviewing them, but observing them using your things. It involves talking to them and showing them how to think like a human, right? We're so used to technology. We're plugged in all the time. Unplug, put it down, use things that you can feel and touch. It will bring back a different perspective, I guarantee you. And very important, we're trying to do things the right way. So when we ask people and when we finally do decide on a survey, we use Six Sigma techniques um, to keep us honest so we have something we can relate to. All right, wireframing, analytics. All right, so what we've covered with you. And questions, which are the most important part because you guys are, are experts in your fields. So, yes. Okay, so, so she asked, how do we sustain that digital design standards that we're putting in place? <clears throat> we honestly pe need people who are devoted to it. And right now, um, 
you guys are devoted to it by extension, but that, that passion lies here, so I need to get that passion out. And then I also need to see people, I need to see management and leadership support what has come of this and then give us some resources who can help to sustain it. Yeah, it can, otherwise it will die. Yeah. How much thought has he given to going beyond the employee-centric HR, IT kind of experience to, say, applying digital experience for, um, say, a loan officer and what their, the actual operational processes instead of making it the intranet just about who I am as an employee, but not what I do at the company. So how do we apply that everywhere, not just within user experience or IT? Actually, I'm working on a number of large projects that deal with the business themselves, so commercial loan origination systems, uh, consumer origination systems, you name it. Everything is in flux right now. So that's kind of the beauty and the scary part of being in my shoes right now, is I'm trying to affect all of these areas and help people to understand through those techniques. And it's working. So it's working in a very brief time period too, so I know it's gonna continue to grow. Uh, the important thing with that is to engage the right individuals. So I am, whether they like it or not, I am pulling marketing into it, um, and then sometimes, they reach out to me, and it's a beautiful thing when marketing reaches out to me and they see the value of doing these kind of things. Whether or not you, know, you get credit for it or not, that doesn't matter. It's whether or not you can actually implement the thing and do it and have it come to light. Thank you, thank you. Any other questions? You mentioned yes. Change management is a group of three individuals. So the company itself is about 3,800, mm -hmm. and change management is three individuals. And she's having a tough time with leading that because of her being newer to the organization, just as Enterprise Architect is newer to the organization, just as I am. So I start to see these by forming connections quickly, and I bring these people who are trying to do the same thing, and I bring us together, and I try to go, what are we trying to do? Where's our value? How do we show that value? So she's also fairly new within the organization, about a year as well. And enterprise architecture lives in IT. I live in IT too. So immediately I get that connection. And when she is flagged about a project that's coming up, she pulls me into it and I come running. And together we try to figure out how not to duplicate. That's really important. So knowledge management folks, try not to duplicate something that's already being requested. If you got to start knocking on doors and finding out how they figure out the what and the who and get in those sessions if you can, the sooner the better. Don't duplicate efforts. But yeah, that's, I don't know if I answered you. <laughs> we can talk then. Yes. We call it full gile. Full gile. Fulton's attempt at being agile. It is one of the, <laughs> It is one of the many things that I see such great potential because once they figure it out and once I can help to work with them and, and, and get their teams beefed up, right, uh, they could go so far because they're not really, they're not. They say they are, but they're not really. Thank you all very much. I want to let you get out of here and get in line for lunch. Thank you.